Once again, Christian greetings to all our valued listeners and viewers throughout the whole world. More particularly to all Shepherds Rod believers and most especially to our beloved brothers and sisters in the United States of America. Good evening and may the good Lord bless you brothers and sisters. Now, let us read to us our on page 86, it says here, The leopard-like beast arises out of the sea in the same manner as the four beasts before it. Daniel 7, verse 3. Therefore, the beast of Revelation 13, verse 1 to 9, is created from the result of war and commotion among the nations in the same manner as Babylon, Medo Persia, Grecia, and Rome. Since the evidence revealed by the symbol cannot be questioned, the leopard-like beast assumes the period after the fall of imperial Rome, corresponding to the feet and toes, iron and clay of the great image in Daniel chapter 2. In other words, the leopard-like beast arrives with the closing period represented by the first stage of the non-decreed beast, while the second stage of the latter, papal Rome, continues up to 1798. Consequently, the unfolding process of the one overlaps the downward course of the other. To John, the leopard-like beast was shown not in its unfolding process, but rather in its closing act. For he says, and his deadly one was healed. He so envisioned the beast after the deadly one had been healed. For he uses the past tense, was. But in Daniel's vision, the work of the nondescript beast was all in the future, say the prophet, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times and laws, and they shall be given unto given into his hand until a time, times, and the dividing of time. Daniel 7 verse 25 and it says, Daniel in vision viewed the history represented by the beast forward while John looked backward. Or in other words, Daniel saw what the beast was to do, while John was shown what the beast had done. To us are page 86 and page 87. Now, first of all, the shepherd's rod plainly told us that there is an unfolding process of its beast, but focusing to the leopard-like beast. And the unfolding process of the leopard-like beast overlaps the downward course of the non-discrete beast. And the downward course is pointing first to the first stage of the non-discrete beast. And the shepherd's rod plainly declared that to John the Revelator, the leopard-like beast was shown not in its unfolding process, but rather in its closing act. Or, in other words, when the entire description of the beast is already intact, that is the closing act of the beast. And the closing act of the leopard-like beast, according to the reading, is after his deadly wound was healed. That is the closing act of the leopard-like beast, after his deadly wound was healed. But concerning the nondescript beast on its second stage, it's pertaining to the ecclesiastical Rome or the papacy, let us first focus our attention. Now, the, the shepherd's rod plainly declared here in 2SR page 86. It says, Inasmuch as the lion, the bear, the poor-headed leopard, and the nondescript beast, the symbols of Babylon, made of Persia, Grecia, and Rome, are linked to each other, the unbreakable chain of beasts make it impossible for another universal beast system to intersect their consecutive order. Consequently, the leopard-like beast of Revelation 13 verse 1 to 9 must follow the non-descript beast. Or, in other words, the shepherd's rod is plainly telling that the leopard-like beast, it utters the impossibility to reign as a universal beast or system at the time when the little horn head was reigning. Now, here in 2SR page 85, it says, the nondescript beast in its first stage has ten horns, and in its second stage the little horn came up, and three of the ten were plucked up by the roots. It denotes that they can never be reinstated as kings. The horns being reduced to the biblical number seven, 
signified that the papacy was to have complete sway over the entire world as far as the Christian church is concerned. So here the Shepherd says that in the period of the second stage of the nondescript beast represented by ecclesiastical Rome or the papacy, the number 10 or the 10 horns of the nondescript beast was reduced to 7 bearing completeness indicating that the little horn head according to the reading was to have a complete sway over the entire world as far as the Christian church is concerned. So that is only pointing to the Christian church that accordingly the papacy according to this reading have complete sway as far as the Christian church is thus concerned. To us are page 85. And that is the reason why it is impossible for the leopard-like beast to reign as a universal beast during the Dark Ages. Because at that time, the one that reigning over the whole world, it is the little horn head or the second stage of the nondescript beast. And the Shepherd's Rod is plainly telling us that since at the time when God showed the vision to John, the leopard-like beast is no longer in its unfolding process. Or in other words, there was an unfolding process of the leopard-like beast. Not only the leopard-like beast, as well as the scarlet-colored beast. There was an unfolding process. But the absolute fact is that the unfolding process of the beast, it was not shown by God to John. When God showed the vision to John, it is already the closing act of the beast when all are already in existence. Now let us read 2SR 118. It is concerning Revelation 17 verse 10. And there are seven kings. Five are fallen and the one is and the other is not yet come. And when he cometh, he must continue a short space. Revelation 17 verse 10. The king that is must be the one in existence at this present time. And the one that is not yet come must be in the future. Consequently, the five that are fallen must be in the past. This would be the only fair position for one to take without doing injury to the holy word of God. And then it says, as it has reference to the entire world's history under sin, we must consider the number of universal empires or periods since the world began. There is one before the flood. That is the antediluvian world. As previously explained, the second is Babylon, and the third is Medo-Persia, and the fourth is Grecia, and the fifth is the Roman monarchy. These five are fallen. The one that is, is the present civilization since the fall of Rome. Under the symbol of the leopard light and the scarlet colored beast to the commencement of the millennium. Which period is termed Rome in her broken state represented by the feet and toes of the great image of Daniel 2. These are the six kings. Five are fallen and the one is. The other that is not yet come must be the period after the millennium corresponding with the beast that is to ascend from the bottomless pit. Now let us ponder deeply, brothers and sisters. According to this reading, the six universal kings is represented by the leopard-like beast and the scarlet colored beast. Now we already read that the, the leopard-like beast arise out of the sea. The same territory by which the poor beast in Daniel chapter 7 or the same manner according to 2SR page 86. Now let us read first the great controversy 440. It says here, But the beast with lamb-like horns was seen coming up out of the earth. Instead of overthrowing other powers to establish itself, the nation thus represented must arise in territory previously unoccupied and grow up gradually and peacefully. It could not then arise among the crowded and struggling nationalities of the old world, the turbulent sea of peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. It must be sought in the western continent. What nation of the new world was in 1798 rising into power, giving promise of strength and greatness and attracting the attention of the world? The application of the symbol admits of no question. One nation and only one meets the specification of this prophecy. It points unmistakably to the United 
United States of America. Now, this proof prophecy is very plain that the sea represent the old world and the earth represent the new world or in other words the sea represents the continent of europe but the earth represent the western continent now the shepherd's rod plainly declared brothers and sisters i would like to read first 2sr 112 and 113 the scarlet colored beast is the last symbolical beast in the continuous chain of historical events this beast the does not arise from the sea like the beast before it, but was seen in the wilderness. Therefore, the scarlet colored beast is created by an historical incident unlike the beast before it. The symbol denotes that it is not strife and wars between the nations that brings this beast upon the stage of action, but rather a principle that is the opposite of the symbol through bold sea. The only difference between Daniel 7 and Revelation 13 is done in Daniel Daniel chapter 7, Daniel called the sea as the turbulent sea. I would like to read the statement. It says here, Daniel 7, verse 1 and verse 2. In the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the psalm of the mothers. Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night, and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea. And I think it is in the great controversy by which the voice of inspiration emphasized that the great sea is turbulent sea. Now, I would like to read again the statement in the Great Controversy 440. It could not then arise among the crowded and struggling nationalities of the old world that turbulent sea of peoples and multitudes and nations and tanks, or the Bible called it great sea, but the Great Controversy used the term turbulent sea. But in Revelation 13, in verse 1, there was no description of the sea. It did not say great sea. Revelation 13 verse 1, And I stood upon the sun of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. Revelation 13 verse 1. Now, there must be an accurate significance. Why is it that the, the sea in, in Daniel 7, verse 1 and 2, it was described as great sea. In the great controversy, 440 called it the turbulent sea. But the sea in Revelation 13, verse 1, there is no description. But just to say sea, the leopard-like beast came out, came up out of the sea. And the scarlet colored beast, according to 2SR 112, it says... This beast does not arise from the sea like the beast before it, but was seen in the wilderness. Therefore, the scarlet colored beast is created by an historical incident. Unlike the beast before it, the symbol denotes that it is not strife and wars between the nations that brings this beast upon the stage of action, but rather a principle that is the opposite of the symbol troubled sea. In the great controversy, it is called turbulent. Sea. In 2SR, it is called Troubled Sea. And in the Bible, it is called the Great Sea. But Revelation 13 verse 1, there was no description. It is just to say the leopard-like beast came up out of the sea. Now, the scarlet-colored beast, according to the vision, John saw the scarlet-colored beast in the wilderness. Now, there must be an accurate significance concerning the wilderness. Now, I would like to connect our study, uh, brothers and sisters, concerning the woman, the woman in uh, Revelation chapter, chapter 12. Now, to repeat again, both the leopard-like beast and the scarlet-colored beast, the only portion that God showed to John is the closing act, the closing act of the leopard-like beast and the closing act of the scarlet-colored beast. And John the Revelator, he has no knowledge concerning the unfolding process of the beast. And that is why the shepherd's rod says, last year's statement, it says, Where systems and governments do not all exist at the same time, the symbols show 
their consecutive order. Another factor to be noted that every symbol of the entire procession of the beast point out facts that were to transpire within the period represented by each beast. But what period of the beast? It is the period of the beast when such beast became a universal beast. And at the time when it became a universal beast, that is the closing act of the beast. The last portion of the beast by which God showed to John the Revelator. And to repeat again, it says in 2SR page 86 to John, I would like to read the upper portion. Consequently, the unfolding process of the one overlaps the downward course of the other. Therefore, there is an unfolding process of the beast, the leopard-like beast in the scarlet colored beast. To John, the leopard-like beast was shown not in its unfolding process, but rather in its it's closing up. So the shepherd's rod is emphasizing that concerning the unfolding process of the leopard-like beast, it was not shown by God to John. But such knowledge was bestowed by God to be the hotter. He is the messenger, the inspired servant that explained the unfolding process of its beast, more particularly to the nondescript, leopard-like, and scarlet-colored. But such knowledge, the unfolding process of the beast, it was not shown by God to John the Revelator. And the only thing that was shown by God to John the Revelator is the closing act of the beast, by which at the time when the closing act of the beast begins, that is the time when the beast became a universal system. According to our reading, brothers and sisters, and the voice of inspiration, it says here in 2SR page 88, Therefore, it would be inconsistent to conclude that the horns as well as the heads could denote a consecutive order of systems so long as they all appear at the time of the closing act of the beast. When does all the description of the beast are all intact. That is the time of the closing act of the beast. And the description of the leopard-like beast concerning the closing act of the leopard-like beast, John says, and his deadly one was healed. Or in other words, the leopard-like beast did not become a universal beast, not until his deadly one was healed. Now let us go back first, brothers and sisters, to the first three beasts in Daniel chapter 7. Lion, the bear, and the leopard, or the four-headed leopard. In 2SR 118, Revelation 17 verse 10 is pointing to the seven universal empires or seven universal systems. Now, I would like to read again 2SR 118. As it has reference to the entire world history under sin, we must consider the number of universal empires or periods since the world began. There is one before the flood, as previously explained. The second is Babylon. The third, Middle Persia, Port Grecia. Now, in this reading, we can easily discern that the first three beasts in Daniel 7 is a part of the universal beast or universal system, brothers and sisters. But why is it God did not place ten horns on the first three beasts to indicate that these beasts are universal system? The mere fact that the shepherd says that the leopard-like beast is the fifth universal system, then the four universal system must be beginning from lion, bear, four-headed leopard, then the nondescript beast. But the absolute question is that since they are a universal system or universal beast, why is it that God did not place ten horns on the lion, the bear, and the four-headed leopard? If the significance of ten horns is to indicate universal peace or universal system. Now let me read to you page 86 to SR. Therefore, it is unquestionably clear that the fixed number of horns 10 are designed to universally symbolize the people's and governments to us are page 86 and to repeat again if that is the case then the reason why god plays 10 horns on the nondescript beast the leopard like and scarlet colored is to portray that such beast is a universal beast or system now why is it that the lion the bear and the four-headed leopard 
although it is a universal beast. Why is it that God did not place ten horns on these first three beasts? There must be an accurate significance and reason. Now, I would like to read again their statement in 2SR, page 10. While the enemy has succeeded in confusing the written word, God light is the earth with his glory by these symbolic revelations, and that is the beast revelations, and by which he discloses the entire truth and uncovers the traps of the devil. Now, I would like to repeat again that the beast revelation cometh from God. It is the chosen medium of God to expose, to unmask the deception of Satan. Satan wants that if possible his deception cannot be detected. That is his desire. He is determined. And therefore, God, our all-wise God, choose the symbolization of the beast to expose the deception of Satan. Now for sure, Satan would not deceive those people who are already his. And also, the divine purpose of revealing the truth concerning the beast revelation, God's intention is to the righteous, to the saints, that they could be able to detect and then escape such great deception. And that's the reason why I always emphasize that whatever the symbolization of the beast, that is the reality, brothers and sisters. And the shepherd's rod emphasized clearly by saying that God is at supreme pains. Can you imagine the statement that God is at supreme pains? Track number 12, page 28. Not only to record a graphic description of the evil which through the instrumentality of the beast or through the instrumentality of that system, Satan has determined upon the whole world to deceive the whole world. Track number 12, page 28. But Satan, brothers and sisters, I would like to, of course, the term that Satan was completely defeated. I remember here in 2TG, number 16, page 21. The dragon, though, is again to miss the mark. For the earth is to open her mouth and swallow up the flood. That is, inspiration definitely forecasts that those who join the church for some purpose other than to follow and practice the truth shall be disposed of by a miracle, be swallowed by the earth as it were. And when this comes to pass, Satan shall have meet his third defeat. Summarize here are his three defeats. Number one, failing to devour the child. Number two, losing the war in heaven. Number three, failing to paganize the church by plodding her with the unconverted. This number three, the last and the third defeat of Satan, brothers and sisters, we need to study closely what church mentioned here that Satan failed to paganize that church. By plodding her with the unconverted. Does the devil fail to paganize the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the last candlestick in Revelation chapter 2? Think it thoroughly, brothers and sisters. Now, for example, I would like to read 1 TG 21, page 13 and 14. It says, At the beginning, the serpent persecuted the church, but as he saw that the church still grew and prospered, he reversed his tactics and began instead to persecute the pagans who did not join the church and raise ministers by whom to bring in a flood of unconverted by which to paganize the church so that she could not Christianize them. Now beginning from, from the Ephesus to the last church, the Laodicean, the Seventh-day Adventist church, did the devil fail to paganize that church? I think I will no longer read more passages. That church had been paganized. We already read in 2SR, page 95. The seven heads are to symbolically point out these high places, ruled by unsanctified leaders who had attempted to mix the sacred with the common and refused to hear the word of the Lord. The biblical number seven denoting completeness naturally would comprise all Christendom at the time the prophetic truth is made known. Such apostasy is not a strange thing in the history of God's people. For time and again, the church has fallen under a satanic flood. 
In Luther's day, conditions were as bad as when the church crucified Christ. If this generation is more wicked than any before, then what would immunize the church from just such an apostasy? It is accepted by most Bible students that prophecies of this nature are understood only when the prophetic object in view is fully developed. Therefore, this is the time of which the symbols speak. However, there is another angle to this by which we shall prove that the facts presented are true. And in 1 SR, it says, 220, let's read again the statement. It says, But as the shrewd enemy succeeded to pull down the first, he proceeded to use the same method to the last. And the last mention here is the Seventh-day Adventist Church. The enemy succeeded to pull down the first, and he uses the same method to the second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh, the last. Now, I would like to read this reading in symbolic code. I uh, love so much this statement. Uh, saying that uh, Satan's defeat in these endeavors is complete and shameful. Now, remember it is Ezekiel 28, right? 11 symbolic code, number 7, page 14 and 15. And in Bible commentary, to repeat again, Ezekiel 28 is attached to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Now, let us read again. 4 BC 11.62 and 11.63. A general movement represented. I ask our people to study the 28th chapter of Ezekiel. The representation here made, while it refers primarily to Lucifer, the fallen angel has yet a broader significance, not one being, but a general movement is described, and one that we shall witness. A faithful study of this chapter should lead those who are seeking for truth to walk in all the light that God has given to his people, lest they be deceived by the deception of these last days. And then it says, soon to be fulfilled. Ezekiel 28 verse 2 and verse 6 to 10 and 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 7 to 8. The time is past approaching when this scripture will be fulfilled. The world and the prophecy Protestant churches are in this our day taking sides with the man of sin. The great issue that is coming will be on the seventh day Sabbath. 4 BC 1162 and 1163. Now, let us read here in 11 Symbolical, number 7, on page 15. You recognize this description as being that of Lucifer. Yet the prophecy is addressed to the prince of Tyrus, just as Isaiah 14 associated the king of Babylon with Lucifer. By this, we are to understand that both Tyrus and Babylon are instigated by Satan and are set up to do on the earth the identical wicked work that Satan did originally in heaven. But we are here told that Satan's defeat in these endeavors will be complete and shameful. I would like to read again, 11 Symbolic, number 7, page 15 and 16. But we are here told that Satan's defeat in these endeavors will be complete and shameful. Now, let us study closely. Why is it that the shepherd says that the defeat of Satan, the third and the final defeat of Satan, is complete and shameful? Well, the spur prophecy describes that accordingly, it says, Satan is a diligent Bible student. Can you imagine that? Satan, it says, Satan, uh, volume 9, page 16. Satan is a diligent Bible student. He knows that his time is short and he seeks at every point to counter work, the work of the Lord upon this earth. I would like to read again. Satan is a diligent Bible student. He knows that his time is short and he seeks at every point to counter work the work of the Lord upon this earth. In the Desire of Ages 115, it says, let's read the Desire of Ages 115. When God's written word was given, Satan studied the prophecies of the Savior's advent. From generation to generation, he worked to blind the people to these prophecies that they might reject Christ at his coming. Desire of Ages 115. Uh, therefore, there might be possibility, and I think not only possibility, but reality that Satan is also studying the Shepherd's Run publications and for the purpose to counter work or to counterfeit the work of God. Now, I would like to read White House Recruiter on page 24 and 25. Here, let every serious-minded reader pose to ponder 
What inspiration says? Verses 19 and 20 explain that those who escape the slaughter of verses 15 and 16 are to be sent as missionaries to the Gentiles who as yet know not God. Hence, these escape remaining ones are God's remnant, His first fruits of the harvest, His guileless servants, the 144,000, the elect, and only they, none others, the scriptures declare, shall bring all their brethren from all nations in a clean vessel into the purified house of the Lord, his white house. What is more, no right thinking mind can even begin to conceive of the possibility that with any less holy and formidable an agency than such a mighty ministry, one escape from sin, sinners, and judgment. Can and will the Lord ever finish the work and cut it short in righteousness? Romans 9 verse 28 Thereby saving His people from the terrible tempest that is now about to break upon the earth and lash it length and breadth. And then it says, Satan grimly knows this. He knows his time is short and growing carefully shorter. He knows that this faithful ministry are soon to be disclosed to view and to take the field against him. He knows that that will be his waterloo. Hence, his supreme effort now is to eliminate them. Finding out at last, though that he cannot do so, his consequent aim will be to bring the time of trouble such as never was in hope of destroying all. Now, I would like to focus first to the attention, the statement that Satan is determined that if possible, such ministry protected in the Bible, more particularly in the shepherd's rod, will not exist. Because he know it, that it would be his waterloo if that ministry will be in existence. Now, let me read to you the statement in the old symbolic code. To symbolic code, number 1, pages 9 and page 10. It says here, Is Satan working for God's and his church and his church interests or against? If against, he will never do one thing to purify the church or to fulfill the prophecy. The only thing that would compel him to pass blue Sunday laws and to go to make war with the remnant of your seed, with those that are left, Revelation 12, 17, is the purity of the church. When God by the slaughter weapons of Ezekiel 9, Take away the tares which receive not the mark. And even then Satan will not enact blue Sunday laws until after he has exhausted every other weapons against the church. Therefore, as long as the church remains in her present Laodicean condition, there will be no blue laws or war against her, but a bluff only to make her members believe that they are free from his snares and that he is still trying to cause them to fall. But the worst of it all is in that they are sound asleep, which is shown by the fact that they still think Satan is working terribly hard to fulfill God's word by trying to pass blue laws and are not aware that he is only playing with them as a cat with a mouse. And the brethren to whom the Lord has entrusted the spiritual interest of the people, instead of sounding the alarm to arouse the church, are determined to even silence the voice of the rod and thus rocking her to a more sound sleep. To symbolic code number 1, pages 9 and page 10. Now, let us connect that statement in Doha 124. It is concerning the scarlet colored beast. It says, Does the number of heads and full of names include all the options from Protestantism and Catholicism? Had there been no mention made of being full of names, more than seven, and scarlet, which denotes that God's people had been called out of it, therefore scarlet scheme, under course, ready to perish, the biblical number seven heads would have included those who are carrying God's message as in the period of the leopard like this of Revelation 13 verse 1. At the time his deadly wound was healed. Therefore, it would have made no allowance for the church which keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. And thus, it would have contradicted the following scripture. And the dragon was wrought with the woman, God's church, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, Israel the true, the 144,000, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Revelation 12, 17. 
Now let us enumerate one by one all the important points in our reading. We already explained that concerning the leopard-like beast, the closing act of the leopard-like beast is the time when his deadly wound was healed. Now I would like to read again. It says, to us are page 86. To John, the leopard-like beast was shown not in its unfolding process, but rather in its closing act, for he says, and his deadly wound was healed. So the closing act of the leopard-like beast is found in the description, and his deadly wound was healed. That is the closing act of the leopard-like beast. How about the scarlet-colored beast? The scarlet color beast commenced in 1929. For sure, it could not be the closing act, but rather it is the unfolding process of the leopard, this, the scarlet color beast. Now, what is the closing act of the scarlet color beast? Now, I would like to read to SR 114. The period represented by the scarlet color beast commenced in 1929, but what period? The period of the unfolding process. At which time the deadly one was healed. So Pretty Hotep is trying to explain that the commencement of the unfolding process of the beast is the closing act of the other beast. For example, the unfolding process of the leopard-like beast beginning from Pride 388 AD when he reigned contemporaneously with the nondescript beast second stage. That is the unfolding process of the leopard-like beast. But at the same time, that is the closing act of the nondescript beast and the downward course of the first stage of the nondescript beast. But at the time when the deadly one was healed, that is the closing act of the leopard-like beast. But that is the unfolding process of the scarlet colored beast. Now, let us go back again into SR 114. The period represented by the scarlet colored beast commenced in 1929, at which time the deadly one was healed, but his career is not fully developed. The word developed is the same, unfolding process. Until the woman shall sit upon his back. The commencement of that act, that the woman is sitting upon the back of the scarlet color beast, it says, the commencement of that act will be marked when the following prediction is fully realized. When Protestantism shall stretch forth her hand across the gulf to grasp the hand of the Roman power, when she shall reach over the abyss to clasp hands with spiritualism, when under the influence of this triple union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its constitution as a Protestant and Republican government and shall make provision for the propagation of papal falsehoods and delusions, then we may know that the time has come for the marvelous working of Satan and that the end is near. This time is for the church, volume 5, page 451. So the voice of inspiration made it so plain, brothers and sisters, that the closing act of the scarlet colored beast, the time when his career is fully developed, that is the time when the woman is riding upon his back. That is very plain on this reading in 2SR page 114. Now, thus the woman is riding on the back of the scarlet color beast in 1929? And this is the answer, brothers and sisters. Remember, the beast as all other beasts represents the world. In 2TG number 36, I would like to read again the statement. 2TG 36, page 6. The beast, as though all other symbolical beasts we have seen, represents the world, while the horns represent the rulers. It says here, The beast, as though all other symbolical beasts we have seen, represents the world, while the horns represent the rulers. Now, what world represented? by the scarlet colored beast when the scarlet colored beast began to exist in 1929 according to 2SR page 114 the scarlet colored beast commenced in 1929 now since the the beast represent the world what world represented by the scarlet colored beast remember the scarlet colored beast arose in the wilderness the leopard like beast it is in the sea the poor beast in Daniel 7 it is upon the great sea or troubled sea or turbulent sea now, to repeat again, the beast, as do all other beasts, to TG 36, page 6, represents the world. Now, what world represented by the scarlet color beast in 1929, since the scarlet color beast, the period of the scarlet color beast, commenced in 1929?
Does the scarlet color beast already a universal beast in 1929? Uh, think it thoroughly, brothers and sisters. Now, let's go back again to our reading. And I would like to read again the statement here in 2SR 111 and 112. It says, We believe that there must be more complete symbolical information for this present generation than for any previous one. Thus, it is very inconsistent and unreasonable of those who have applied the leopard-like beast of Revelation 13 and the scarlet colored of Revelation 17 in addition to the nondescript beast of Daniel 7 as symbols of Rome. Why so many symbols of Rome and none of the period for which the books were written? The books were written for what? Daniel and Revelation. It is written to the time of the end. And in 3 Symbolic Code 8 to 10, page 8, it says the time of the end in more specific terms commenced in 1844. And also the statement in 2SR 118, let us read again the statement. It says, the one that is, is the present civilization since the fall of Rome, under the symbol of the leopard-like and the scarlet colored beast, to the commencement of the millennium, which period is termed Rome in her broken state, represented by the feet and tooth of the great image of Daniel 2. These are the six kings. 2SR 118, therefore it says here that the, the leopard-like beast and the scarlet colored beast, it is Rome in her broken state. And it says, and also represented by the feet and tooth of the great image of Daniel chapter 2. Now, for example, let us connect first to the feet and tooth of the great image. We know that there are five tooths in its foot, the left and the right, or the right and the left foot. Five tooths in the right foot, five tooths in the left foot. Equal. And the same with the leopard-like beast and the scarlet colored beast. The ten horns of the leopard-like beast and the ten horns of the scarlet colored beast. Think it thoroughly. Would you think it is not just a mere happenstance that 5 times 10 or 10 times 5 equals 50? The 10 horns of the leopard-like times 5 of the foot of the 5 tooths on the great image equals 50. And then the 10 horns of the scarlet colored beast times 5 equals 50, pointing to the 50 nations in Europe and the other is pointing to the 50 states in the United States of America. It is closely connected to that messenger. Let me read to you. Revelation chapter 10. It says here on verse 1 and verse 2. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud. And a rainbow upon was upon his head. And his face was it were the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book opened. And he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. We know the little book mentioned there is the book of Daniel. Now, let me read to you here in 2TG, number 15, page 3. That which is to be during the sixth trumpet while probation still lasts. So it is already during the period of the sixth trumpet. Verse 1, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. This angel has all the characteristics of a power that sends down the latter rain and that causes the spiritual grain fully to develop. For that is what cloud, sunshine, and rainbow indicate. As a rainbow never appears without rain, the angel is therefore the angel that brings the rain and the sunshine for the development of the final harvest. For sure, this angel cannot be William Miller. There was no such indication that God bestowed to William Miller the Lateran message. Although we have a separate subject concerning the subject of the seals, but I would like to read to you here in 2TG, number 14, page 15. It says, Thus it is that chapters 8 and 9 bring us to the close of provision. Chapters 10 and 11 consequently sandwiched in chapter 8 and chapter 9. I think it's easy to understand the word sandwich. It must be in the middle part. You see chapter 10? And not only chapter 10, but as well as chapter 11. It is sandwiched in chapters 8 and chapter 9. And for sure, logically, 
chapter 10 and chapter 11 is sandwiched in the last verse of chapter 8 and in the first verse of chapter 9. Now let us go to the last verse of chapter 8 so that we could understand how does chapter 10 and 11 had been sandwiched by chapter 8 and chapter 9. Now let us read, brothers and sisters, Revelation chapter 8 on verse 13. Let us read uh, the Bible. It says, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woo, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels, which are yet to sound. Then for sure, no one would dispute to the fact that verse 13 is a part of the trumpet study. Do you believe that verse 13 is a part of the trumpet study? Then you need to decide. If verse 13 of chapter 8 is a part of the trumpet study, then you need to apply this divine principle. It says here in track number 5, page 26, Symbolical or literal which? Only when this question is rightly answered will we have the K, the correct interpretation, to unlock this great symbolical treasure house of truth in sitting out upon this quest. Let us begin logically at the beginning of John's account of his visions of the trumpets. Now there is another statement in page 41. It says, for if every term is not symbolical, how shall we differentiate those which are from those which are not? Of course, all the Bidyan will agree that every term in the subject of the trumpet study, they are symbolical prophecy, not literal. Now look at verse 13 on Revelation chapter 8. And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven. We know that it is not literal, but it is symbolical. In the judgment that pertains to the dead, the significance of flying in the midst of heaven is by sending the message through reading materials, through pamphlets. And, but in the judgment that pertains to the living, by which it is definitely applied, it is through internet. The message is broadcast through internet, flying in the midst of heaven. And it says, brothers and sisters, And I beheld and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, the same description with the first angel's message and the third angel's message. In Revelation 14 verse 7, saying with a loud voice. And in verse 9, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice. And we know that the loud voice mentioned there, no, it is not a lot of noise. It is not shouting, but rather a clear message warning the people, saying woo-woo to the inhabitants of the earth. If this prophecy is a symbolical prophecy, then the earth mentioned here could not be literal earth, but the symbolical earth. Woo-woo-woo to the in inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other voices of the trumpet of the three angels which are yet to sound. Let us distinctly separate the groundwork and the perfect fulfillment of the prophecy. And we will prove to you, brothers and sisters, that the perfect fulfillment of the prophecy concerning the seven trumpets is found in the judgment that pertains to the living, beginning with the first trumpet. And that is the reason why the shepherd's rod says in 2SR on page 200, let me read to you the statement given by the voice of inspiration. 2SR page 201. It says, This book contains the names of the saints and the seven seals comprise, prophetically, the world's history during which time the saints are sealed. These seven periods of unfulfilled history sealed the book, and the only one that could open it, see into the future, was the Lamb. It says, Seven periods of unfulfilled history. So, there are still unfulfilled in the historical event. And that is why Bethlehem says in track number 5 on page 34, it says here, Fulfilled prophecies are seen therefore to be employed by the scriptures only as groundwork for that part of prophecy which is yet to be fulfilled. I would like to read again. Fulfilled prophecies are seen therefore to be employed by the scriptures only as groundwork for that part of prophecy which is yet to be fulfilled. Have you noticed that the period concerning the judgment that pertains to the living, Jesus Christ several times compared the occurrence in the days of Noah? In Matthew 24, Jesus Christ says, as in the days of Noah. And we know that the days of Noah, that is the first trumpet. 
So let us distinctly separate in the first trumpet the groundwork and the unfulfilled history. Here in Matthew 24, it says verse 36. Uh, you can read from verse 36 up to verse 51. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And in two Azar, it says here, on page 183 to 184, it says, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. As the foolish virgins at last came to the door, it is evident that they obtained the oil, learned of the message, but there had been a delay. The door was shut, and they were left out. Now why were they unconcerned at first, and very zealous at last? The experience in this instance is about the same as that of the deludes. Well, Noah preached the coming of the flood, the world paid little attention to his message, but those who believed went into the ark at a given time and the door was closed. But not long afterwards, signs of Noah's protection appeared and as drops of rain began to fall, the wicked multitude became alarmed and rushed for the ark, but the door was closed and they were left out. The door that was shut is a symbol showing that probation for the church had closed just shortly after the foolish virgins became alarmed. At last they were willing to pay the price and buy the oil, but it was not a change of heart, only the fear of losing out. Their course of action had left them without the seal. The man with the writer inkhorn had passed them by. What a terrible mistake, what a disappointment, almost saved, but entirely lost. Brothers and sisters, in this study, I would like to prove that according to 2SR page 255 saying, So again, we find that one thing proves another. 2SR 255. And also, the statement in track number 5 on page 36. Accordingly, as every letter, every word, and phrase of a sentence has its appointed part to play in giving coherent expression to the thought intended, just so has every scripture its appointed part in unfolding Bible truths when it is carefully joined its right relation in the picture of revealed truth, one leading on to and illuminating another, the great overall design stands out in all the solemn majesty of its mountainous finality and grandeur. Track number 5, page 36, or in other words, we will prove, brothers and sisters, that all the events in the closing scenes of this world history, every Bible province explain the period of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. That is why it is every subject is closely connected to each other. So, we will continue that subject, brothers and sisters, and hoping the good Lord will bless us and would help us Thank you very much for listening and viewing this program. Have a wonderful evening.